Um, Anthony Reese is watching, but he can't zoom in at the moment. So we're hoping to get Anthony from the TNHA because he's been in court for the last two days mm. dealing with the CBD scheduling. But CBD is part of this huge picture of complementary medicine. So they've been in court for the last two years, and, and this was the main one, and he was very, very upbeat about it. It'll probably be appealed, uh, the world, and that will go on and on and on as well, as usual. But um, he was upbeat. I wish he was here to talk about it. But we do have Paul Mitel waiting in the wings to... Um, oh, no, here is Anthony. Anthony is right there. Anthony, come on in. Hello, guys. Can you hear me clearly? We yeah. can. Oh, fantastic. Uh, we'll, we'll see you in a moment. Uh, but we can hear you fine. Let's just listen to him if, if his signal's bad. So, Anthony, um, um, really good to see you. I'm glad your wireless is back. You did sound upbeat yesterday when I spoke to you. Uh, are you still upbeat? No, most certainly. Um, our, our case was very uh, straightforward. It was, uh, it was put uh, very well by our advocates. We were very happy with the work that was done in the court over the uh, last two days. Um, we basically have had an issue for the last two years with the Minister and the SAFRA over regulating all natural health products. Um, where the regulators has tried to bring in this sort of catch-all regulatory scheme for anything that has health-giving properties, uh, including any animal, mineral or vegetable, literally. And um, the Medicines Act is very prescriptive. It says that a medicine is only a thing that is to treat uh, or prevent disease or symptoms. It, it's got nothing to do with products that actually benefit health. And... Um, in the past, since 2017, the, the regulator has tried to expand its ambit to bring new products into its its jurisdiction, which, which quite honestly, we believe it doesn't have the jurisdiction to regulate. Uh, the the um, Parliament never intended for this act to regulate these types of things, but was uh, intended to regulate uh, from 1965 in the beginning we look at Hansard records of Parliament up until the day the Medicines Act was, was gazetted. It talked about the registration of patent drugs. It had nothing to do with all these other things that the software are now trying to grab into their ambit. Mm. Um, so we've taken the complementary medicines regulations up um, on review. Um, we brought that review up about two years ago. It's been a paper law fair up until now, and uh, in the last two days we sat down in court and we argued our case. And we just hope it lands on the side of freedom of choice for people in this country to continue to access natural health products without overzealous regulation requiring all sorts of licenses for companies and the, the uh, distribution chain or the value chain to, to, to jump huge hurdles uh, to get there, which basically... Uh, only favours pharmaceutical companies, to be honest. Right. Um, and, yes. would, and would whittle away the public's choice of these kinds of products because they would be removed from the market. When not, when? not removed, sorry, not removed um, from uh, an overzealous regulator going out there and ripping things off the shelves, but companies just withdrawing voluntarily because they can't. It's not worth it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we've lost him a little bit. It hasn't yet even registered a single natural health product, although it is requiring every com company to register. It is absolutely patently ridiculous. And it's it's sad that last week, Friday, CBD was yanked into this complementary medicine scheme. Right. Um, and is going to suffer the same fate. And so it's quite synchronous that, that this happened just before the court case. And... Um, We've been chatting to various CBD people in the CBD industry this afternoon, this very afternoon at four o'clock, and we will be taking the matter further. Good. So when you started this a couple of years ago, Anthony, was CBD part of the, the, the package, or has CBD now become part of it due to SAPRA rescheduling it? Yeah, look, CBD was never part of the complementary medicines package at all. It right. was always a very highly scheduled substance and you know, illicit, dangerous, uh, yeah. substance. <laughs> right. it, it, it was a natural health product, really, which it is, which was bad. Um, and then we had some, some victory last year where we managed to um, 
secure the right for, for CBD to be sold uh, without prescription and without having a company having to go and register and license itself to, to purvey CB, CBD under certain conditions. But at the, uh, on the 15th of May, that 12-month exemption expired. It lapsed for a, for a period of days. And um, about a week later, the uh, Government Gazette came out with CBD being re scheduled now into a, a category called Schedule Nought. It's still on the ladder of schedules, which means that every company that manufactures, imports, uh, wholesales, retails, etc., will have to have the requisite pharmaceutical licensing in place to do so. Um, and this puts a major stumbling block before the industry. Um, a lot of the industry is simply not ready for this. It's going to cost millions of rands to get compliance up to standard. And it's going to lock a lot of people and the industry out of the market. So this whole, this this last 12 months that they put a hold on everything, what was the point of that? Because now people have spent millions setting themselves up on the high street to mm -hmm. be told that you're not allowed to do that unless you've got a doctor in the house. CBD is now not doctor free, yeah? It, you have to have a doctor to get it. I mean, scheduling, scheduling is something that a, a regulator does. Uh, in order to, to protect the public from substances that have some inherent risk. So the higher the schedule goes, supposedly the risk is higher. The, the SARPA have not demonstrated one single iota of scientific evidence to show that the new scheduling status um, has, has, necessitated, has been necessitated by any risk. So for the last 12 months, they've, they've had no communication with the industry, no transparency over how they came to this conclusion of putting it into Schedule Zero complementary bits. And these are honestly things we are now going to be asking legal for them to to uh, reveal the record of decision making in this regard because we believe it's patently false how they've made these assumptions. Completely. Now you've been in court, you were a day and a half in a virtual Pretoria High Court. It seemed to go quite well, both sides argued so now, presumably, you're waiting for a decision, for a judgment, yeah? That's correct. And a judgment could be anything from a few weeks to a few months. Um, obviously, um, it's, it's, it's a very technical case. We dealt with it on constitutional principles. We dealt with it on, on, uh, on procedural irregularities. We dealt with uh, unlawfulness. Uh, we dealt with... So many things. The, the case had about seven very strong apex arguments and legs on it. And we're hoping that one, two, or three of those legs are strong enough to knock this thing out of the ballpark. All right. But, but the bottom line is two weeks ago, if you were selling CBD in a health shop as an essential item, it's different this week, yeah? It has, it has changed. There is a scheduling involved in it now. It, it, it starts from now, I believe. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. No, it's not business as usual for the companies anymore. Um, we're getting some of the larger companies uh, have woken up to this and are already writing letters to the suppliers and saying, do you have the requisite licensing in place to be a manufacturer or an importer or a distributor or a wholesaler? And, and they're nervous. They don't want to carry products that haven't been through a... Yeah. a uh, ...normalized pharmaceutical uh, chain. Well, I can, I can only imagine how long the waiting list to do that is. How, that, that must be... That, I, I don't even want to know. It must be years. Well, it's taken some companies between seven... You know, speaking to our members across the country that have been dealing with natural health products who have put in applications. We know people that have put in applications back in 2011 and still haven't even had a courtesy phone call from the regulator to say, can we come and have a look at your place so we can license it? And we've, we've got the evidence of this. I mean, we've got, we've got, the, uh, we've got the bank transfer mm. proof. We've got the uh, application, uh, uh, sort of, what, what did you say, the, the um, counter remittances from the uh, registered post saying that the applications went off and uh, even the acknowledgements of receipt. And nothing has happened. And... I mean, I just don't know how the SARPA is going to do it. They've got 16,000 pharmaceutical drugs in the backlog that they're trying to get through a <laughs> historical backlog. Um, and yet they're too busy focused on going to raid healers. Yeah, they were, 
Yeah, pharmaceutical drugs. These, these are like you know life-saving drugs that we need. You know, most of our doc uh, hospitals and doctors are prescribing you know life-saving medicines that are three, four generations old. You know, Madness. you're not getting the novel stuff through here. Madness. Um, and 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 yet they're chasing after people selling CBD and vitamin C. It's ridiculous. It right, well, Myrtle's on the thread there, and she says, on a, she makes the point that the CBD oaks are facing a few hurdles, and it'll be carried to building, and maybe um, we're all on the same side now, because yeah. all of a sudden it's back in the same thing. CBD has been prohibited, and we're in the game of prohibition, so maybe we can, uh, maybe they'll join up with the, the bad boy THC group. Like, we got your backs, guys. <laughs> we got your backs on yeah. all of it. We got your That's backs. That's it. One family. Anthony, Anthony, um... Go ahead. One of the things we do. One of the things we are going to do now is we're going to we're going to use, utilize Paja and the Fire Act uh, as the first primary step, and we're going to ask these guys, you know, what scientific rationale have you relied on to to bring out these capricious limits? Um, where where did you? How on earth did you set 0.01 percent of THC <laughs> CBD? You know, show us the science. They, the, the, the regulator prides itself even in court as being a science-based regulatory board, and it talks about it making its decisions on the current science. Well, quite honestly, we're not seeing that science. Yeah, that's, that's it. Incredible. Well, Anthony, it's been great catching up with you fortuitously. You've had a very, very busy week, and you had all your shareholders' meetings today. I'm glad it's going well, and I'm, I'm glad that there's like a consortium of people at it because you're much more powerful as a team. We found that out long ago. Um, we watch with interest. What we're going to do now, you can hang there. You can be with us for all evening if you want. You don't have to go anywhere. But what I'm going to do now is...